welcome to the AGRIS webinar for data providers. In this webinar, we are going to introduce you to AGRIS and we are going to look at who uses AGRIS, the statistics and impact factors of AGRIS and uh, the benefits of you as a data provider of contributing content to AGRIS and uh, the visibility linkages and how AGRIS uh, ingest data and what type of content is acceptable in AGRIS and how do you join AGRIS as a data provider. So AGRIS, it was launched in 1975 to enhance visibility of agriculture publications produced worldwide. In practice, this bibliographic database has been contributed uh, by uh, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations together with other partners that include the uh, governmental, uh, governmental agencies, universities, research centers uh, in agriculture from different countries. Uh, and AGRI stands for the International System for Agriculture Science and Technology. It is a collection of multilingual bibliographic resources. Uh, in other words, uh, uh, AGRI supports multi languages and it is a network of more than 350 data providers from 144 countries that is maintained by the Food, of, uh, Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. Uh, and it is uh, a web portal, it is available on the internet. The AGRIS collection, uh, initially when AGRIS was launched, it focused on uh, grey literature and uh, of late, it is also is it it also includes uh, papers, reports, and other uh, content types. As of one April twenty eighteen, there were nine million one hundred and fifty three thousand seven hundred and thirty eight records in Agris. So that uh, those are the records that makes the entire Agris collection. Uh, the main languages that are represented in Agris are English, French, Spanish, Chinese, Italian, Germany, Japanese, Russian, Portuguese, Arabic, uh, Korean, Farsi, and other languages. other aspects that you might need to know about AGRIS, about 85% of the records, uh, of the AGRIS records are indexed by AgroFOC keywords. AgroFOC is the uh, FAO controlled vocabulary that covers all areas of interest of the Food and Agriculture Organization. That includes uh, food, nutrition, agriculture, fisheries, forestry, environment, and any related agriculture science uh, disciplines. It is, so AgroFOC is published by FAO and edited by the, a community of experts. So like indicated before, uh, AGRIS uh, supports multilingualism. In other words, there are a number of languages that are represented in AGRIS and uh, users can, it has got the functionality that allows users to create a personal profile uh, when they are searching for content on Agris. Uh, uh, though users can actually search without creating a profile, but uh, creating a profile actually helps them manage their searches better and they can also bookmark their searches and revisit the results later on at a later stage. And who uses AGRIS? On average, uh, about 600,000 agriculture and research professionals worldwide access AGRIS resource each month. And uh, these users include graduate students, lecturers, 
researchers, librarians, catalogers, and other information pro professionals. 82% uh, of the users are students, researchers, and librarians. So that makes the majority of the users. Provenance of registered users. Uh, those are users that have managed to create a profile on the Agris portal. Uh, most of the users are from Asia, followed by North America, Europe, Africa, South America, Oceania, and the rest is unknown. So you can see Africa is Africa, our users are 13.44%. So we need to, to uh, advise or to create more awareness uh, about this portal for users in Africa so that more users can use the portal. Uh, and in terms of registered data providers, as indicated in the previous slide, in, uh, in, in the previous slide, uh, there are more than 350 data providers in Agris, and 55 of those are from Africa. Uh, so, like this is actually a small percentage of uh, data providers. It's actually about 16 percent of the data providers that are coming from Africa. So we need to, us as Africans, we need to contribute more to the portal so that we can increase the visibility of our content through this, uh, this resource. Uh, in 2017, uh, active data providers were from those countries that include Belarus, Brazil, China, Colombia, Cuba, Finland, France, Iran, Latvia, Philippines, Poland, Nepal, Romania, Russia, Serbia, Slovakia, Switzerland, Thailand, Ukraine, and the United States of America, and also the Food and Agriculture Organization in itself. Uh, so from that list, we can see that there is no country, African country that is represented on that list, uh, which uh, means us as Africans, we need to do more for us to be, for our research to also be visible via that portal. Uh, and also, if you look at the, at the individual data pro providers, like records that are coming from the individual data providers, uh, most of the records, they coming from Asia and uh, followed by South America, then Africa. We saw on that slide on the provenance of Agris users that most of the users are coming from Asia. So is most of the data providers or the, the record, they're also emanating from Asia. As for Africa, we are just contributing about 133,337, which is just above 10% of the entire Agris collection. So this shows us that uh, content from Africa um, is quite minimal. So if we want our research, our content to also be used by the international community, we should contribute more. Uh, that is a snapshot of the, um, of the Agris portal itself. As you can see, users can create an account, though it's not quite visible. If you want to know how to use the portal itself, we'll be having another webinar for users on the 4th of May. You are free to join that webinar. Uh, the announcement for that webinar will be going out soon. So you are free to join that webinar. We are also going to share the announcement with you. Then you can register and also participate in that webinar so that you can see how you can search for content on the Agris portal. Just like any database, it has got like the simple search button, the advanced search functionality, and you can also refine your search. And like indicated before, users can actually create an account, a personalized account on the Agris portal that will allow them to personalize their searches and uh, also bookmark their results for them to revisit the results at a later stage. 
And you might be asking yourself, what are the benefits of contributing content to Agris? Uh, Agris is an international brand, and as we indicated before, it is uh, run by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, which is one of the major UN agencies. So by participating in uh, the Agris network, you have also created a linkage for your organization uh, with, uh, with with the FAO brand, and Agris has been around for the, the for the past 43 years because it was launched in 1975, and uh, the brand is well established and it is used by almost 600,000 users per month, like we saw in previous statistics, and the network is still growing. Uh, so by uh, contributing your content to Agris, your publication will actually be viewed or be used by these 600,000 or more users. There is a possibility of like it being used by most of the 600,000 users. And you also get the opportunity to contribute to international science. By participating in Agris, your publication is contributing towards bridging the access gap for scientific literature from Africa. We know that um, uh, um, from the research that is being done worldwide, uh, less research is coming from Africa. So by contributing your content to Agris, you're actually contributing to the amount of records or the amount of research that is coming from Africa. And uh, Agris has got an international audience like we saw in previous slides. <clears throat> it is used by users from, international users from or like a wide number of countries worldwide. So by contributing your content to address, your, your records are, are actually, you are actually exposing your records to, to this audience. Uh, visibility linkages. Agris is also is indexed by Google Scholar. So take for example, you search for an article or for a record that is available in Agris via Google Scholar. You can actually retrieve it through Google. As you can see, like we did a search for that article that is titled, uh, it's, a, it's a record that is available in Agris that is titled Population Fluctuations of Red Flower Bee in different flowers in laboratory. So we did a search of that article in Google Scholar, Google Scholar via the Google Scholar uh, website, which is scholar.google. Uh, uh, because I'm in South Africa, is .co.za, but you, you can use uh, scholar.google.com. So we searched for the title and you can see like on our results it is the only result showing and uh on the um, on the citation we can actually see that the uh, the that title is available in agri so you can actually click and have access to that resource directly from google scholar And looking at uh, the Agris data ingestion, how does Agris ingest data that it gets from the data providers? Uh, the two ways. Uh, the first one, uh, data can be pushed to the uh, to Agris from clients, or Agris itself can actually pull data through harvesting from clients. And there are a number of formats uh, that are accepted when you are when you have joined the Agris network, and you are uh, you are presenting your data to Agris. Uh, the data has to be in XML format, uh, and uh, the formats that are acceptable are uh, Doage, PubMed, Mendeley, Crossref and not mark 21 modes or other similar uh, X XML formats. If you have got a format that you are not sure about, you can write to us 
at agris.fao.org and we will be happy to assist you. And uh, each month, uh, the Agris team prepares regular Agris releases uh, that includes all metadata that was uh, submitted and it's uh, also in XML format. And uh, looking at the content that is acceptable in Agris, like we indicated, agri like Agris is an agriculture bibliographic database. So the thematic areas that are, are, are acceptable in Agris have to be agriculture related. So we accept thematic areas in agriculture, nutrition, food security, forestry, fisheries, rural development, biology, food systems, livestock production, natural resources, and the related topics. Uh, and as to the type of content that is uh, acceptable in Agris, the, we accept journal articles, monographs, book chapters, gray literature, including unpublished designs and technical reports, thesis, dissertations, and conference papers. So like some of you might be having some institutional repository where you, you store your thesis, like thesis and dissertations, and any publications that have been produced by staff and students in your institution and researchers in your institution. So you can actually contribute that content, like increase publicity of that content by contributing it to Agris. And uh, how do you join the Agris network as a data provider? You can contribute either as an institutional repository, like I indicated before, or as a journal aggregator. Your contents should fall in one of the Agris main categories. Like if you visit that uh, site, you actually see the, the, uh, the categories that you that are uh, that are recommended for agris uh, and for registration you can write to us at agris dot agris at fao dot org after your registration you receive your agris uh, your agris data provider id so each time when you are actually submitting data to agris you'll be using that uh, that ID that will be allocated to you. Uh, Agris also has got a list save that is hosted via D groups. Uh, and uh, after you have joined the network of data providers, you will be added onto that list save though, so that you are kept up to date about the developments and happenings in Agris. Thank you. Any questions?